Hello everybody, Don Don here again with the next update on the War Corsair project. Alright, this weekend all I did was spent most of yesterday and today sanding out all the control surfaces. So everything is now finished sanded and ready to start the epoxy wipe. Uh, but before I do that, some of these uh, controls I still have to come in here and cut these pockets out for the hinges. They still have some fiberglass cloth left in them from the glassing process as you can see. That's the other and this was that uh, little defect in that aileron that blistered. Nice and smooth now. You can see where it was but it's perfectly smooth. Uh, as you can see the pinholes and such in there but the epoxy wipe will fill all that stuff in. But they all came out really nice. Uh, the only thing I had to do a little double coat on was uh, the rudder. I ended up with a little bit of a pocket <coughs> on one side. It was a little low here and had to fill it in a little more. Other than that, uh, the rest of them sanded out just nice. <clears throat> so, next step will be I'll have to do it in probably two phases. I have to do one side at a time. You know, put the epoxy on, rub it on, squeegee it all off, work everything. Um, if you don't remember, I have a specific rubber squeegee I bought just for doing that. It's a soft rubber. Maybe a little harder, but I have to clean it up real good. Um, and hopefully I'll have enough uh, epoxy left to do that. It doesn't take much. It goes a long ways. Uh, the first coat tends to absorb a lot. Uh, uh, even though this is epoxy itself, it still kind of wicks in some on the first coat. Uh, any place where you see the, the bare glass showing, it uh, fills that up nice. And it's smooth and everything, but it does help give it a nice gloss cover. Because if you just try to paint over this, some of this stuff will still tend to show through. Uh, but the epoxy primer I'm using, <coughs> it is a sandable primer, so it goes on nice and thick and it helps hide any imperfections as well. And then on the flaps there's also the holes here where the push rods have to attach. So I have to cut these pockets out and then once the parts are fitted on, the other piece of the hinge tends to uh, cut into here so these all have to be kind of re-notched again for clearance for the other hinge that's on the back of the spars. And as you can see the bottoms you know they turned out real nice. The bottoms are fairly straight so they stand up really good. Uh, the ones that really surprised me was I thought it was going to take a long time was these curves. Again I use this wooden one when you're doing a lot of work this thing is invaluable. I tell you, I do more sanding with that block sander than anything. All this stuff had to be sanded. And this is 36 grit, I believe, 36, 40 grit. And it knocks that stuff down fairly quick. It takes me about 45 minutes to do one part, both sides. Uh, but this one, these surprised me. I thought they were going to be a little time consuming because they're not straight, they're completely curved. But literally, it just sands out this way real nice, and then you kind of go on an angle with it, and that cuts the uh, ridges down from the lines. You can see there was some kind of uh, marks here, but you can't find any of that stuff. It's all nice and clean. So again, all these have to be cut out. And then in the sides, you can see I got a little dot here. I'll be drilling a hole in there. That'll give me access to stick the bolt in through the little, uh, it's a, what's it called? Uh, I can't even think of the name of them now. <coughs> eye, eye bolts. It's an eye bolt that uh, the rod ends, quarter inch rod ends hook to, or three sixteenths inch rod ends, excuse me. Uh, those are these little guys here. All these little rod ends. Three sixteenths bolt. And they just hook into the uh, eye eyelets. So, and if you notice, oh, come on, focus. I ended up uh, looking up the uh, drawings for the Corsair that uh, Boynton used. Uh, it turns out Boynton never flew Lulu Bell, which is the number 86. Uh, it was a photo op shoot. It's the one that ever you'll see with Boynton sitting in it, uh, handing out some kill stickers for some baseball caps. Uh, and it had uh, 20, 20 kills on it, and it said Lulu Bell up here in the front. So looking at the original picture of that, I was able to come up with this style here. Now the original one, you know, these were all just kind of hand painted on and they were pretty crappy looking, but I drew them up. But they're exactly the same configuration and everything. The only thing is, is I, as you can tell the difference in the color, this is painted. These are just uh, satin white uh, 
decals I cut on my vinyl cutter. I didn't feel like stenciling them up or close enough. So that's what that looks like. <clears throat> now I may or may not uh, go as far as putting on making up the stickers for the kills and putting them on there and maybe even the Lulu Bell name which may also have been Lucy Bell. Uh, turns out Boyington was dating a woman stateside and her name was Lucy. Well, the story goes that she left him and uh, ended up taking $15,000 out of their bank account. So he wasn't too happy about that. So and Lucy Bell may have been the original name and then they said that it was actually Lulu Bell. Uh, any pictures of it only show um, the guy standing there and his arms covering up the what would have been the L-Y or S-C-Y, so they don't know if it was Lucy or Lulu Bell. <laughs> but as you can see, I got this side done as well. So, I mean, again, it doesn't look like a lot, but this whole garage is covered in dust, and I even tried blowing it out before starting this video. Uh, but I'll have to empty the garage before I do any painting, uh, push the plane, everything outside. I've been kind of leaving the plane up in the air, um, <clears throat> trying to, uh, you know, work on everything in the back still. Um, it's not a big deal. I do have it strapped down. I just drop it and then push her all outside, uh, clean the garage out, and then I can get to painting. But first, I'll have to do, I'll, like I said, I'll do this probably in two coats. I'll do uh, one side, all of them at the same time on one day because it takes two or three coats to fill up everything. It's a, uh, you put one coat on, squeegee it off, do everything, and then you wait about 30 minutes, and then you come back. If it start feeling tacky, then you go ahead and just do the second coat. So put it all on, squeegee it off. And I figured it'd probably take two, at the least three at the most, to get it filled in. So you're talking three coats, half hour between each coat. I mean, it takes several hours, and then it's going to take you know the rest of the day for these things to uh, cure up enough to where I can flip them over and do all the other sides. So it's probably going to be a two-day process. Um, during the week, I may go ahead and get these things worked on, get these all cut out and shaped because, uh, as you can see, the insides of some of these is uh, just styrofoam. That one's already got some epoxy in it, but I need to coat those with epoxy. Uh, to uh, stiffen them up and then as I put the epoxy wipe on I'll be epoxy in this plywood on the sides too to seal that up and then everything will be painted <coughs> so the rudder came out nice uh, there's just this one little pucker here it almost feels like a slight pocket so I may end up uh, putting a hole in there and try to inject some uh, epoxy in there before I seal it up smudge on there from something but that's where I'm at. It's been a long day. Uh, allergies have been in complete uproar today. Absolutely terrible. Um, <clears throat> so, a little trimming, get the epoxy wipe done, and they'll be ready for primer. Um, I think I have enough. Well, the primer uses a different uh, catalyst on it, so I've got between the catalyst and the primer I've got almost a quart and that should be enough to paint everything with primer and then like I said that stuff can be light sanded real easily and then once that's done then it's ready for color I'll have to order up some uh, another probably another quart of catalyst for the epoxy colors uh, but I have and then I still need the the dark blue so that's where we're at this weekend folks uh, so that's going to do her. I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. It's already after 6 p.m. and I am whooped. Uh, it is pretty warm out. It's supposed to be pushing 90 again tomorrow. It was mid-80s today and pretty humid, but I had the door closed. I just opened it up to do this video. So it was it, uh, it's starting to cool down, but it was up to almost 80% humidity in here, but it was only like 75 degrees, so it didn't feel that bad. So, as always, folks, uh, feel free to leave any comments, questions, or concerns. And uh, as they come in, I'll answer them as they come along. And uh, like, like always, appreciate everybody taking the time to watch my videos. So, for this week's update, uh, that's going to do her. And so, we'll catch you next weekend. This is Dino Dawn out. <laughs>